Hey everybody, it's Nathan Cool with Swell Watch on SurfingMagazine.com. Wanted to give you a quick update on two things happening right now. One, a uh, long-term period of northwest swell, why that's developing in a pattern across the northeast Pacific that's going to bring some powerful surf to the west coast, and not just one swell, but actually a series and train of swells. And secondly, why that's tied into what's going on with the El Nino-La Nina cycle. Where are we with all of that, and what does that mean possibly for the coming weeks and the coming months? So let's dive right into it. This is what's going on right now. So first, just to take a look at where we are and what's going on, we can see on this FN Mach wave model a large storm that's already coming off of the, from the Aleutians. It came out of the Western Pacific and it's starting to head down towards Southern California, which is here. This is Northern California, the Bay Area. If we move the models forward in time, we can see what's going to start happening. That continues to progress toward the West Coast. It does continue to grow in size also because it's being pushed down toward a more southerly latitude. So that system is actually gaining quite a bit of strength as it continues to move south. Another one is starting to come in behind it. Notice though that there's something blocking it right here before it gets down to the Southern California area. So let's go ahead and move those models forward in time. You can see it does get bumped up and pushed toward Vancouver. Obviously Oregon would get probably slammed with that heavy, heavy surf that would be hitting Northern California. And then of course Southern California gets the tail end of that. So as that moves forward in time, another one then forms behind it. And then as that one moves out, we can start seeing another system that's forming right out of the western Pacific, starts gaining strength once it reaches the tip of the Aleutian chain, and then once again it starts taking a similar pattern. And look at the size of this. Now don't get too excited yet. This is an extended long range model. So you can see down here that's 132 hours out, and sometimes they get a little overdone at that far out. But we can see that puppy start to grow, and if it does, that would be very, very heavy surf hitting the California coast. And then look what comes in behind it. Even more. That right there is probably close to 50 foot seas. That's a 180 hour model. I wouldn't put a lot of trust in that, but let's take a, take a look at how far out these systems are. So when we take a look at a, a standard kind of a swell with about a 16 second period, when we hit 140 west longitude, that's about eh, two days out or so, a little bit to actually west of that would be about two days. This right here is close to about three days out once we pass 150 west. And out here when we're near the Aleutians, that's about four days out. Now, of course, it depends on the strength of the swell, but we can see here, this one would start hitting us probably around the fourth. That's when it hit Southern California. And then other ones coming in behind it for that would probably hit the sixth. That's a two day swell window. And then another one that would be out here about two days, three days out, that'd be about the eighth, ninth time frame. And then we take a look at then when more of these start coming down, that's looking about the 11th, 12th time frame and a very powerful swell. This swell would actually travel faster. Now, why is this pattern developing? So let's take a look at the jet stream. So this is the jet stream as it sits right now. This is Southern California. And we can see that we have some ridges of high pressure that are kind of nudging it north, but nothing like it was during the La Nina. So when we move the models forward in time, we can see that the jet stream pretty well stays together. Now, there's a ridge of high pressure over Southern California, and this is for the second half of this week. This model is on Wednesday. And of course, that's bringing a nice offshore flow to Southern California and a lot of the California coast. But the jet stream is still strong enough and well placed so that storms can still follow that storm track, they just get pushed north at the last minute. Now, as it does get pushed north, you can see it kind of wobbles a little bit farther south at times, and that's going to bring more rain then to Northern California. Not as likely to bring storms to Southern California, but still a lot of good drought relief for the California coast. So when we take a look at the jet stream for the long term, and that starts moving along, yeah, we start seeing a pretty good pattern for storm formation. And even out here on the extended long range, which would be when we'd see that massive potentially massive swell that could hit us later this month, then the jet stream is lined up even more ideally. Now, tying that into where we are with El Nino La Nina. We can see from the sea surface temperature anomalies across the equatorial Pacific that there are some cooler waters, so we are in somewhat of a La Nina, but it's not that strong. When we take a look at the numbers, this is where we are right now. And we can see that in October, we're a little bit below the, uh, the average uh, SST anomaly, and that would start falling into a La Nina-esque type of pattern, but really it's not that low. You can see where the El Nino peaked when we were back here at the, uh, and this was January 2000, 2016. So we could start seeing a 
uh, El Nino start to build again. Models have been delaying this over the last few months and they delayed it once again, but nothing here shows that we'd go into a strong La Nina. Instead, this is a fairly neutral state right in around these zones right in here. So I wouldn't worry about that all that much as far as are we going to see a La Nina? Are we going to see a blocking pattern? Are we going to see a uh, ridiculously resilient ridge reform? Or are we going to go into a, a strong El Nino? I really don't think it's going to happen either way, at least not for the near term. So what we're going to see is a nice jet stream pattern. That's what we're seeing right now, staying at moderate latitudes. And this little bend in the jet stream right here that keeps going south, that's what's building those storms. So swell after swell after swell is looking to head toward the west coast of the U.S. That means a lot of surf, a lot of dangerous conditions also, so be aware of that. So that's a quick synopsis of where we are right now with everything. A lot of swell headed toward the west coast of the U.S., so keep an eye on that. And also that means we could see an extended period of it because of what's happened with the kind of absence of El Nino La Nina being in somewhat of an ENSO neutral state. So that's all I've got for right now. If you like this video and you want to hear more of these type of updates, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel. You can also follow me over on forecasts.surfingmagazine.com. Until next time, this is Nathan Cool saying take care, be safe, and smile on the lineup.